All right, now we're going to practice finding the area of irregular shapes. If you notice, I gave you a set of prompts over here that will help you find the total area of your irregular shape. The first thing we want to do is find out how many are completely filled in boxes. Meaning that when I look at this irregular shape that I've drawn, I'm going to come through and I'm going to color all of the grid squares that are in completely inside of this irregular shape. Alright, when I looked, I decided that the corner of this one was cut off, and that's why I have not colored it in. The corner of this one down here was cut off. This one was obviously cut in half. This one lost a corner, this one lost a corner, cut in half, lost a corner, lost this whole edge. This looked like it was entirely contained, and this one to me looked like it was entirely contained, but cut off, contained, cut in half, cut in half. This one met nicely at the corner, and all of these are cut in half. That's why I chose the ones that I did to color in completely. Now, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I colored in 16 of those grids completely. So over here where it says completely filled in boxes, I'm going to write 16. Now, partially filled in boxes. What I mean is, let's go back and using a different color, let's color in all the boxes that have part of the shape. Alright, so what I did was I followed the outline of my irregular shape, and any box that that black line traveled through, I colored in a different color. And now what we're going to do is go around and count how many of those partially filled in boxes we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So it looks like there are 26 of them. So I'm going to come over here and write down that I have 26 of those what I'm thinking of as partially filled boxes. Well, on average, half the boxes are filled with the irregular shape and half the boxes lie outside the irregular shape. So if we divide by 2, then approximately 13 more full grid squares would be filled in. The last thing I want to do now is use this information to find the total area of the irregular shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with the 16 completely filled in boxes and the 13 partially filled in boxes and ask ourselves, what is 16 plus 13? It's 29, and because this is area, our units are squared. Now I want you to try the same process on problem number 13. All right, do you remember when we talked about how to do conversions? One way to solve this problem is with conversions, and this is really good practice for you. So if I tell you that one grid square is equivalent to 10 square meters, and I know that my picture covers 10 grid squares, right? That's why I said it was 29 units squared. Remember that I want to be able to cross cancel my common label. So I take the grid square label from here and I put it down here. I hope you don't mind. I abbreviated GS for grid squares. And according to this piece of information, for every one grid square that I have, I know that they represent 10 meters squared. So when I look at this, I now know that these labels of grid squares will cancel out, and the label I wanted of meter squared is what I'm left with. Now remember, the only thing you have left to do is multiply straight across. 29 multiplied by 10 is 290, and then I'm going to put on my label of meter squared. 1 times the invisible 1 under here is also 1, and 290... 290 meters squared is the area that this particular picture would represent if this were representing a lake on a map.